This is the Kraken. High priest of Yog Shatath, Dammer of a Thousand Souls, wielder of that old magic which the world calls Black, Cauldron Bearer of Nyarlathotep, Arc Overseer of a Thousand Spawn of Shubnigroth. And this is my latest attempt to bring my dark magnificence to the uninitiated masses. Before I begin, I would like to say something, and that is it is really goddamn hot in this room. Really goddamn hot. I live under the goddamn water. I do not like the heat. Do you think it's hot under the ocean? It is not. I do not live on the land of a planet that orbits a ball of fire. I prefer to live under the ocean where it is cool and not hot. If you do not know who the Kraken is, or what I stand for, then there are a few steps I'd like you to take. The first step is, pull your head straight out of your goddamned ass. Don't stop, don't wait, do it right now. And pick up a goddamn book. Any book. Hell, you don't even need a book. Just go on your goddamn phone, or go on the laptop and use the internet. Type the Kraken into Google or Wikipedia, and there I am. That's me. That is who you are listening to right now. I'm the old eldritch scourge of myth. I stand for many things. I stand for hatred, for loathing, for malice. I hate most things, not everything. I do not hate literally everything. There are a few things I do like. I like suffering. I like bringing pain and unhappiness to all those around me. One of my favorite things is probably damnation. I enjoy damnation. Have you ever seen a man damned to hell? I have. Sometimes I go to heaven just to watch it. That's right, I go to heaven sometimes. I'm not allowed in the pearly gates, but I do like to stand outside them and throw rocks at the angels. Of course, heaven is on a cloud. There are no rocks up there, so I have to bring my own rocks. And sometimes the angels throw the rocks back, which is great, because it means I have more rocks to throw at them. For you see, I throw much harder than angels do. Much, much harder than angels. Sometimes, though, God throws the rocks back. And God was the lead pitcher on our high school baseball team, so we can throw quite a bit harder than I can. Speaking of God, I know that some of my listeners are quite attached to him. I would just like to say that this is acceptable. Very acceptable. For he is very real, and I have interacted with him and seen him on a number of occasions. I do not like him, and he does not particularly like me, but this is acceptable and quite fine. For he is real. And I have done things with him on occasion. Sometimes we, we have gone drinking together, for instance, in the past. Um, we didn't do anything so much during high school. He was uh, two grades over me, and the only thing he really ever did with me was beat me up and take my lunch money. Sometimes he just took my lunch money. Other times he just beat me up. But uh, we never really had any meaningful interactions in high school. But we have gone drinking. There are a few things I'd like to say about God. The God in the Old Testament, the God in the New Testament, different people. When God had a kid, he really mellowed out a lot. If you read the Old Testament, he's quite the hard ass. Quite the hard ass indeed. He, uh, he kills people en masse, he ravages lands, he tells his followers to commit genocide. I liked him a lot back then. I'm not as much of a fan of his new work or his progeny, but I do... I did like him more once upon a time, even though he has done horrific things to me and people I know on occasion. He's actually entertaining to go drinking with. Um, he likes to troll people. For instance, Jesus took water and turned it to wine. Where do you think he learned this trick from? He learned it from his old man. You see, his old man, he never turned water to wine, but he would go out to drunks and turn their wine to water. This used to start all kinds of bar fights. God loves nothing more than starting a good bar fight. And he always would win. Because you can't beat God. I should know. He beat the hell out of me every day when we were in high school. I know you can't beat God. I've never been able to do it. I've never seen anyone else do it. He killed the Leviathan for fuck's sake. Just killed him. I've seen numerous people try to start bar fights with God. It always goes poorly for them. One time... I saw some poor fuck try to do it, and God beat the ever fuck out of him. 
Straight up beat the fuck out of him. Shoved the pool cue up his ass. Poor fucker had holy shit for the rest of his life. But that was the god of old. He's not really the hard ass that he used to be. I, of course, am the hard ass I've always been. For example, do you know where diamonds come from? They come from fucking me. Because I eat the souls of orphans and shit out diamonds. That's where diamonds come from. I hear people say, every day, Christians and other spiritualists, I hear them say, there's a reason for everything. Yet, when you're walking along the road and you see a rock on the ground, you have to ask yourself, what purpose does this rock serve? Clouds serve a purpose, they help shield the ground from the sun's harmful rays. All animals serve to feed animals that are greater than them. Rocks, however, serve no purpose. No real practical application. If you see a rock on the ground and you step on it, it hurts you, and you get angry and throw the rock, and that's about it. You can't really do anything with rocks. The reason for this is that I know, for a good fact, because he's talked about it on more than one occasion, that God created rocks just to troll people. He created rocks to be thrown at other people. So next time you see a rock, and if you are of the religious sort, please do your religious duty and pick that rock up and throw it at someone else. Well, anyway, I like to go to heaven, or rocks at the angels. Sometimes, I will have the fortune of seeing a man damned to hell while I'm up there. It's entertaining. None of you have ever died, so you don't know what it's like to stand at the gates of heaven, but there's a, a big-ass long line you see, right outside of the gates. There's an old man up there with a great book sitting on a pedestal. And you go up there, and you stand in front of him, and he gives you a verdict. Sometimes he fucks with people. Because his entire goddamn job is sitting up there on a pedestal all damn day and reading shit to people. And that shit must get boring. So sometimes he likes to spice his life up. My personal favorite is when he lies to people who are going to hell. That shit is worth a million laughs. But if you actually are going to hell, then St. Pierre comes out with a bat and beats your ass. And throws you straight out of the cloud. When things reach terminal velocity, they tend to make this noise. And souls make this noise, it's a very pleasant whistling noise, and it's coupled with an unearthly screaming, the likes of which I am not able to replicate with anything I am able to do to mortals on Earth. So the soul plummets from heaven, through the astral sea, and straight into hell. And hell is a place that I have been to on many occasions. I like to vacation down there. Um, I make sure to bring plenty of sunscreen because it is, pardon the expression, hot as hell down there. As you know, I do not particularly enjoy the heat, but down there, um, hell is ruled by Hasatan, as he's known in Judaism, Satan, or Lucifer, but really, he's a big pussy. He also went to school with us, he was in my grade, and he is a big bitch. For instance, he is supposed to be the grand enemy, or the, the arch nemesis in Christianity, or at least that's what the Christians and the, the Jews and the Muslims tell us, but it doesn't really add up. I mean, he's exceptionally weak for an arch nemesis, because if you look at all the other religions in the world, they all have these beings that come out of the primordial ooze at the end of time and ruin everything, or Norse mythology, for instance, look at it. The fire giants and hell and Loki and all those other fuckers come out of nowhere and just beat the shit out of everything. And the world ends. That's it. Sergo takes this giant fire and shoves it up the world tree's ass and sets the whole thing on fire and the world ends. That's it. Mass casualties, only two people survive. And that's the way I wish things were. But no. In all the Judeo-Christian religions, their grand enemy is Satan. Which Satan... He's not much. I have some arch nemesises, arch nemesi, and Satan... For instance, look in the book of Job. The book of Job is about this cordial fellow named Job who is sitting on his ass. He loves God, and God loves him, and he has all this shit. And then God dicks him over. Why does God dick him over? To prove a point. That's the God I love. It's the God that dicks people over to prove a point. You see, the book of Job starts with Satan shit-talking with God up in heaven, and saying that this fucker Job is only loves God because God is good to him. And So Satan asks, Hey God, can I dick this guy over? Because I guarantee that if he were dicked over, he wouldn't love you anymore. So God says, Deal. Fuck you, Satan. Let's do this. This shit's going down. 
So Satan dicks him over, kills his family, gives him boils, dildos, trade up his ass, etc., etc. Job has nothing. And then God is proven right in the end, blah, 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 blah. But the point of the story is that Satan has to ask permission to dick people over. You see, if I were in Satan's position, I would have just done it. I would have just dick Job over, killed his family, boils all over him, etc., etc., all the shit that he does. But Satan has to ask permission. That's how much of a pussy this guy is, is that he has to ask permission from his arch nemesis in order to do anything. And yet he is supposed to be the biggest bad guy there ever was in, in Judeo-Christian religions, and if you've ever actually ever met the guy, he wears high heels. He wears high heels and lipstick. And he's definitely male. He's not female in the least. And this is the guy that... I mean, for fuck's sake, Lucifer. You know what You know what we called him in high school? Lucy. Because he's a big goddamn pussy. We called him Lucy in high school. I guess this is the part of my excursion on the internet where I take a couple of questions before closing. Let's see here. First, allow me to take a sip from my beverage. Ah! Who made this? It's hot! It's goddamn hot! Put some fucking ice in it! Right now! Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Beverage is a little hot. Anyway, first question is from Anonymous. I don't blame you for marking this letter anonymously because there's a good chance if your question enraged me enough I would kill you and consume your soul. But this question reads, Dear Kraken, what is the ultimate question? Now I know this faggot is trolling me because what is the greatest question is some big geek inside joke from some fucking book series I don't care enough to read written by some asshole atheist who died a long time ago, but I will answer it legitimately, because I do think it's a, legi a legitimate question. The ultimate question, I am nearly omniscient. I know almost everything. I don't know quite everything, but I know almost everything. So the ultimate question would have to be one that I do not have an answer for. The question that keeps me up at night, that I do not know, really know the answer for, is how much do I hate you? And when I say you, I'm referring to humanity in general. Because I hate you more than, say, dolphins, but I hate you less than, say, whales. I don't exactly know. You're in my top ten things I hate the most, but I'm not exactly sure where you are on the list. And it's very relevant for me, because there's so goddamn many of you. Because all you humans know how to do is procreate and make more of you, which also procreate and make more of you, on and on ad infinitum. Occasionally there's a great big war that wipes out a large number of your males, but for the most part, all you do is procreate and make more. So, it's very relevant for me to know exactly how much I hate you. <laughs> I do know I don't hate you as much as whales. That's not saying much, because there is very little that I hate more than whales. And it deeply enrages me that there's a lot of people out there who do love those little sea fuckers, those little sea mammals, because they're quite the assholes. And I've already spoken at length about whales, but what I will say, and I won't go into the details now, is that if you love dinosaurs, and I know you love dinosaurs because everyone does, except for me, because there's very little in which I do like, then you will hate whales. If you love dinosaurs, you hate whales. And I'll explain why at another point in time. Well, that is all for this time, little crackheads. Hope you all enjoyed my dark magnificence and black wisdom. And I will see you again in an undetermined but short period of time. At which time I will impart upon you more of my glorious omniscience. Till then, goodbye.